Yeah. Um, I think this is really important because I think a lot of people that I've talked to struggle with like the mental anguish yes. of past sin. And, and I think that there's a, a call to press past that. Um, but I, I think sometimes there's language used that's not helpful because um, I think sometimes people use language of forgiving myself or you have to forgive yourself. Right. And I, I, think, I think sometimes that comes from a great spot where it means right. um, let's, let's no longer live with constant shame and debilitating guilt. And I would agree to that. Yeah. Yes, don't. Yeah. You and don't I, have to. Yeah, but I think where I have a concern there is I think sometimes it's, I mean, if one, it's just not a biblical category. Right. right. Um, and I think sometimes what people think by that is I need to stop feeling bad about what I did. Hmm. And I don't think that's necessarily biblical because I think, um, I mean, if we, if we couldn't feel, if we stopped feeling bad about what we did, we'd probably do it again. That's right. <laughs> and if you stop feeling bad about what you did, you can't warn someone else about it. You can't praise God for his forgiveness and you can't t testify about what God's that's done right. for you. So I, I think the pain of our sin is sometimes things that should stay with us. But the question then is, how do we have that pain and that thankfulness to God, but still move for, what does moving forward even mean? Uh, so the Apostle Paul, right, in his writings, he, he would, he'd bring up his past. Yeah. Uh, not to flaunt it, or to, but, sure. but clearly it didn't, poof, gone from his memory, yeah, never exist, to yeah. exist, like, as if it never happened. Right. He, he brought up those things. Um, Philippians 3, that's, uh, you know, but, but brethren, I count my not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things are, uh, that are ahead, yeah. it, it, I think helps me um, in this as I think of this forgetting thing. Um, so it's not that I never again, it never again crosses my mind. Sure. That's not going to happen. It, it, it's going to crop up. Yeah. I'm going to be triggered by something sure. somewhere. And so what do I do about that? What I do is I say, no, I neglect that. Yes. I don't any longer care for it. So yes, it popped up, but out again. Yeah. I've got to push it out because if I don't, I can't reach ahead. I can't no. go forward. And so to me, when I think about this idea, you know, people say, forgive yourself, um, I, I understand, I yeah. think, what most people mean by that. But what it means to me is what I do is I claim God's forgiveness. Yeah, amen. I claim his forgiveness because he's the source. Amen. And when I grab hold of that, that makes me feel good. It yeah. does. Yeah. Right? That gives me joy and hope and a reason to press. Sure, absolutely. Well, I think part of that, too, is that... Um, to remember that one, this is a process. Yes. <laughs> is that this is a, a renewal of the mind to cause us to rethink how we think through these things. And if we get stuck in the same patterns of thinking all the time about, well, I'm no good, I'm no good, I'm no good, then that's the that's the that's the end that we'll 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 disciple ourselves into. Whereas if we over patience and time, and sometimes it takes weeks and months and years, years. even right. to to recover from the the depths of sin, but it's a testament to the power of God. That he can he can restore those situations. I think a lot about um, uh, I can't remember if it's First Timothy or Second Timothy where Paul talks about I, uh, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. chief. And then he goes on to talk about for this reason I was granted grace so that That's I right. might I might be an example of God's patience. Yes. And I think sometimes whenever we see and feel just how bad our sin is, we should see ourselves and as an example of the patience of God. Mm -hmm. That if he was patient with me, he can be patient with, with whoever. And we shouldn't be so individualistic to think that the way that we solve our, our guilt and overwhelming shame is just to, to, to isolate ourselves from others, but it's to be a beacon and an example and a conduit of the grace of God. Amen. Part of me healing yeah. and... and going where God wants me to go, finally. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about moving on from my sin, my past, is um, thinking about what would it take to help 
those whom I've hurt heal? Mm -hmm. And how can I, how could God use me in that? So mm -hmm. we, we've talked about how God's grace allows us not only to be forgiven, to claim his forgiveness, but then to now go to work, now, mm -hmm. now serve. Yeah. And, and so if I think about it in that way, what I have to do is I have to think of, I remember all the times I didn't serve. I served self. Sure. I worshiped me. And, it, and, I'm, and I'm done with that. Yeah. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put others ahead of me, sure. which puts me in the proper place and puts me in a position where now I can truly serve God by yeah. serving others. Yeah, well, I, I think, yeah, amen to that about this idea of service. I think one of the things that to me it just starts with is if the situation is appropriate for it and there's, and there's contact, we haven't totally disintegrated this relationship as you know, an apology. <laughs> just having the guts to say, I'm sorry, and not the whole, like, I'm sorry this thing happened to you. I, I'm right. sorry that I did this thing, that I have sinned against you. Um, and, and to seek restoration, but also to realize that, like, if this is a deal where it's like, you know, we've got family, and, like, we've been sowing these seeds for a decade, right. that it's not going to be, you know, 10 minutes to undo 10 mm -hmm. years, that I, I think people, frankly, are, are right to be skeptical of us. Yes. And I think, I think back to the Apostle Paul after he spent, you know, an expanded amount of time persecuting the church, yes. killing Christians, women, and, and I, think, I think children as well, at least women, are being dragged to prison. Because the church looks at him first like, this is, this is just another, this is just you doing it again. Right. This is just whether it's, you know, pride or anger or manipulation or gaslighting, whatever it is that you're doing, like, this is just another deal you're doing. And I think that as someone who realizes they're wrong, we've got to have some patience. Mm -hmm. That the answer here is repentance. And the answer is repentance for days and weeks and years. Not godly sorrow that says, man, I'm in a mess. How can I fix this mess? Right. And I just start crying. It's true repentance and patience with people as they go through that. Yes, because I think that's a thing that um, I have to patiently commit to this new life that I've chosen because I've because I got to go away from this, yeah. right? And I've made that commitment, but the people that I've heard along the way, and I interact with them, and I uh, run into them, and I or I live with them, right? Yeah. And and so those things are are still going to trigger memories and trigger things that hurt us, mm -hmm. and and real emotion, um, real hurt yeah. that doesn't just vanish. Doesn't go away. And and. That's when I think Satan wants me to go like, well, see, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You've changed. You, you know you've, you've made a different commitment, but they, don't, they can't. And so it you might work. as well just give yeah. up because yeah. this didn't work. Yeah. And that's a massive device of Satan to get me to quit on what God's will in my life is. Yeah. And so I have to be patient with those relationships because I ought to remember that they were once patient with me and that's the only reason that we're still in any relationship here. Mm -hmm.